Alright, what's going on, Forgotten Nation? I'm your host, FG, and welcome back to another episode of Celeste. Last we left off, we finished up the Celeste Resort of Chapter 3, and it turned out that despite our efforts, we couldn't exactly help Mr. Oshiro. But, the journey continues as we continue up the mountain. And up next, I can't say it's my favorite chapter, but it's not the worst chapter. More or less, it's one gimmick that I really hate about the chapter. Up next is Chapter 4, The Golden Ridge. And quite like the name, it's golden. But a postcard from Celeste Mountain, climbing tip, low on energy in a pinch, jumping away from walls doesn't consume stamina. In other words, if you're trying to get some distance, use a wall jump, don't climb. And if you're able to save your dash when possible, try to save it. But anyways, The Golden Ridge has essentially three gimmicks per se. But hey, this looks familiar. A blue bird? I wonder who's nearby. Well, look at that. Alright, so narrative-wise, we would keep going, but we could talk a little more. So, let's see what Granny has to say. The mountain shows you who you really are. So, Madeline re represents parts of Madeline that she may or may not accept. But more on that later. Anyways, here is one of my uh, least favorite parts of uh, Celeste. The wind! And the wind is essentially this driving force that will always push you one way or the other. In one way, it's great. It gives you a huge momentum boost going forward. But going backwards, it's kind of a nuisance. Especially later on that we'll be seeing. Especially later on. But anyways, this part of Celeste Mountain really does feel like a mountain. After all, think about it, you're high up, you have the high winds, and even just the beautiful aesthetic of the, uh, I don't know, would you call this the afternoon, the evening? But the orange setting, the, uh, the beautiful orange sky, really is a sight to behold. Even if this is just pixel art, it still looks great. It definitely looks great. I feel like this is something that if you hung up on a wall as a poster, doesn't matter where it came from, this would be something that would attract many eyes just because of how cool it really looks. So I give props to the art direction for uh, Celeste 2018. 
and to the team that made this, really. They really did make a masterpiece, because I think this is going to hold for a very long time, the aesthetic. I know that even, like, the art itself, and even going with the Pico 8 version of Celeste, that, in some ways, it'd be cool if it had, like, a hand-drawn style to it. But I don't see anything wrong with the pixel art style. But we do need to be careful, because, yep, we're going to run out of stamina climbing. I know that's one thing that actually does deter people from playing Celeste, is the style. And I would say... What's wrong with them? What's wrong with pixel art, after all? Because in some ways, like this, it just looks beautiful. But I get it, there are some games that aren't as good, but uh, still, it is a style to behold. And sure, it's not for everyone, but I think you are really missing out if something like an art style really does throw you off. It's not to say that every art style is good, because I do think that here in 2019, there does need to be a fine balance between an art style with a clean UI, but more importantly, something that holds up against time itself. I can't name how many games I've played in the past that I thought at the time they were really good, but you play them today, and it just looks very clunky and not very professional. That's especially true for games on, like, say, the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo Wii. I would argue that one... <sighs> Retro games aside for, like, say, the NES, the Super NES, Sure, there are some games that are clunky, even today's standards, but I feel like Generation, what was it, 5 or 6, the ones that had like the uh, the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii, some of those games have not held up very well in terms of the aesthetic, the UI per se, the text, the, uh, the logos, I can't say they look very good even by today's standards. And that's a shame, because they were ahead of their time when they first came out. But now, it just feels very clunky compared to stuff we've seen as of recent, even. My favorite examples is Persona 5, and the way how it has the UI is essentially this red style. Red and black. It looks really good. And going back to it, it looks just as clean as you expect it to. And I think it's going to age very well because of that. And since then, there's been many other games that have taken this into consideration the UI. For example, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It was clunky in the Wii U, but it looks good now. Especially so, it's nice and simple and to the point. But uh, we need to save the charge there because of the block that needs to be broken. But uh, here's a good point to talk about the second gimmick that the stage has to offer. These are moving blocks. The blocks move when you stand on them. Later on though, we're going to need these because we're able to manipulate when they go left or right when we cling onto the side. That's the part I hate about these blocks especially true to the B-side. I'll try to pull it off here. Nah, it doesn't work with this one. But when you grab it from a certain direction, this one should work. See? You manipulate the direction it goes in. And there are parts later on that get very difficult. And even just parts like these, well, eh, this one's not too bad. But this is my least favorite gimmick in the game. The moving blocks that you manipulate from the sides. I do not like the moving blocks. Oh, here's the best example right here. So we have to guide it through this path here and get it nice and cozy in order to move forward. Sure, it's easy here, but wait till you see later on. Especially later on. But let's just keep going though. No complaints, no complaints. Don't want to be nitpicking a game the whole time. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be playing the game. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, more detail on the stage. I'm loving, like, the flag designs and the different colors. We have a wide variety. Blue, red, orange, yellow. It's nice and bright. Nice and colorful. Remember, this is a game about a mountain. It could have been nice and basic, but they really went full out with the environments. And there's a lot of colors in place here. It just looks really good. Alright. Anyways, I got through here. I never showed this off in part two, but this is a binocular, um... Uh, yeah, binoculars. <laughs> but they allow you to look ahead of an area to see what else awaits. And sometimes it may even reveal secrets. But that's for ahead, so let's just wait. First things first, though, we got this area. So dash, move right. We're gonna recharge. And we're gonna use this one to ride all the way back. Though I may have already messed up because of the spikes. Nope, nope, we're still good. Alright, we're still good. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Nope, we need to go all the way back down for the block. 
Grab it. Right all the way up. And watch out for the spikes. Alright. You know what the glowing represents. Secrets. So let's find some secrets. Down below, here's the strawberry. But, looks like we even destroyed this wall over here. And what's this familiar block? Huh! I swear I've seen that before somewhere. But, we're not gonna do it just yet. We're gonna do that for a later part. Remember this spot though, it's gonna come in handy. It really is gonna come in handy. But let's go up this time. It looks like we got some more. We gotta get this block over here, right all the way down. And we're gonna take it all the way back up. And I messed up. Oh my gosh, that's why I hate these blocks. <laughs> I really hate the blocks. All right, right back up, jump. Here we go. All right, so we have another platforming section here. And there should be a strawberry up above, if I'm uh, correct. Nope, more platforming. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, it has been a while. I think it's just more stage. Alright. Yeah, you know what, I think it's just more stage. Alright, keep going though. Oh yeah, it is more st Dang it, I thought there was a secret. Well, alright, let's keep going. So alright, as we continue forward, you can see that the winds are definitely picking up. And it's here that you really need to play out your cards. For example, the strawberry, we're gonna go down below, to the right, and we just had enough dash. Just enough for the height we needed. But moving forward, you really do need to consider your dash meter, as well as how far you're able to make it moving forward with the wind in your uh, direction. Because you may not realize it, but you're not going to be able to get as much distance as you think you can. Like right here, just made it. Just made it. Alright, but now here's one of my favorite sections because the wind's in our favor. So we're going to get a decent amount of speed. Just make sure we're watching out for the spikes. Here we go. Made it. Alright. So the other uh, gimmick with the stage, I don't know if I mentioned already, is the bubbles. And when you ride the bubbles, you're able to replenish your dash. These bubbles are able to move in eight directions. However, they only last a short little burst of time. Which means, not only get the plane which way you're going, but you gotta be ready to get out of it as soon as it happens. Alright, here's a great section here. First things first, no secrets. So we gotta ride the platforms all the way where we're going. Just gotta make sure that we don't land on the spikes though. So make it nice and careful. We gotta be fast here though. Make sure we have enough climb. Don't wanna waste the uh, stamina meter. Let's keep it going. Alright. Got the wind in our favor. And let's dash. Alright, strawberry. So up, right. Nope, nope, nope. I messed up. Okay, okay. We still have a chance. Up, right. Got it! Got the strawberry. Alright, here we go. Let's keep moving. We haven't run to the cassette tape yet, but I think it would be somewhere. And we're gonna go for the strawberry. Got it! Oh, I ran out of stamina. Alright, alright. Nope, got crushed by the block. Okay, okay, one more time. Nice and easy now. Go! Charge! Ah! Alright, one more time for the strawberry. One more time. Made it. Oh, just made it. Okay, we got the strawberries. Alright, keep it going. Alright, so here's another section where we gotta ride the platform. See, a lot of this chapter really is just waiting on the platforms. And I don't mind a game that has a little bit of waiting, sure, but... I don't want to have to spend an entire chapter waiting for a block and just pure luck whether I make it in time or not. I don't know, maybe I'm nitpicking too much, but this just really isn't my favorite give it, uh, gimmick in the game. But let's keep it going. There we go, right all the way up. Alright, we should be approaching the end of the chapter very soon, but we have uh, a couple more sections left of the wind. It's a stop and go, so we gotta be careful. Didn't want to go there. Alright, take it nice and easy. So yeah, with real mountains, I think the wind is definitely one of the most crucial things in a climb. Because not only does it alter the temperature, but even your breathing. Remember, the higher you are when you're climbing a mountain, the harder it becomes to breathe because of the pressure. And the pressure is much higher when you're up in the air, as opposed to being on the ground level. 
which means you're gonna have a hard time breathing on top of a mountain if you're not careful. And with that in mind, a lot of people spend a lot of time training just to climb a mountain because of even things just like trying to take in the oxygen. And I said this in the introduction, well, I may have, I did a lot of attempts trying to do just right, but I give props to anyone that's able to climb a mountain in real life. It is no easy feat at all, and it takes a lot of time and dedication to even master it. So once again, if you ever climb the mountain in real life, doesn't matter if it's Everest or even just a smaller one, I give you props. I really do give you props. Then again, what are the chances that someone watching my channel has probably climbed the mountain in real life? Pretty small if I'm being honest. After all, this is still a small channel. Alright, but here we go. We got this section. We got to ride the platform. Me, personally, I can barely even last outside when it's 40 degrees. I have terrible fingers, and it was way back when I was a kid that uh, I went uh, snowboarding and I stayed outside a little too long with the family that I kind of lost feeling in my fingers. I don't know if I had frostbite or if I was like seriously close to it, but it was not a fun experience. I cannot move my fingers for a good half an hour. Maybe even longer, it's been a long time since it happened. I feel like I was by the campfire for a long time. And they say you're not supposed to like uh, keep it under like warm water, like you gotta keep it under cold water too. So I'd imagine it was serious at the time, but it's been so long ago. But nowadays, I live with uh, two pairs of gloves that I like underwrap. Sounds silly, but honestly, I need it. I really do. Because I don't know if I can live without my fingers. Especially if I do stuff like video games. Not a fun experience. Not fun at all. And it's kind of sad, honestly. I don't know what I'd do if I lost my fingers. I mean, maybe, like, say, like, your index finger, maybe your pinky, but, uh, say, like, your core fingers, it's gonna be very hard to even do stuff like type on a keyboard, pick up a, I don't know, like, a pencil or a pen. I don't know, I don't imagine if that ever happens. Life's scary, man. Life is scary. Alright. I don't want to make this a part two, because otherwise this is gonna go on longer than I thought it would. But I'd imagine we're near the end. Yeah, okay, yep, the wind's picking up heavily. This should be the final stretch of the chapter. And this will probably be a longer episode. I didn't want it to be this long originally, but it seems there's not much choice. I mean, I could split up into another one, but... Eh, we'll keep it. Alright, so we need to switch down there in order to open that area. So the wind is so strong right now that we could barely even move forward, which means we have to rely on the dash in order to keep going. Easier said than done. Alright, careful now. Grab on. Slide down. And scale up. Here we go. And now the last gimmick of the stage. Snowballs. Yep, snowballs. Just like Mr. Shiro, they're coming from the right side of the screen this time, and you are able to bounce on them. And you're going to need one for Strawberry up ahead, but more or less, it is just a momentum boost for an extra jump height. Take it nice and easy. And we're going to backtrack on this one to get this Strawberry. There we go. Bah! Alright, I want that Strawberry. It's a relatively easy one to grab. Just got to make sure that you're really taking your time and trying. Take it nice and easy. I don't hate the chapter, it's just more or less that these are some of my least favorite gimmicks that the game has to offer. And, mm, honestly, there is a chapter coming up I would say is my least favorite, but it's, I, mixed feelings. I'll just say mixed feelings about the chapter. Alright, let's keep it going. And climb. Alright, we're doing it. Watch out for the snowballs. Probably one of uh, Olaf's uh, body parts flying at us. <laughs> no joke, at the time of this recording, Frozen 2 is coming out very soon. I wonder if it's going to be good as, good as uh, the original. I mean, I can only imagine it is Disney, but at the same time, we're talking the company that pumped out a lot of direct-to-home videos way back in the uh, early 2000s. Plus, that was the time when they made Chicken Little. I'm not hating Chicken Little, but I don't think it holds up very well today. If anything, it does remind me of, like those older uh, Disney cartoons in some aspects, like especially like the baseball part of it. 
but uh, not the best movie of the time. Far from it. Alright, let's keep it going though. Ah, oh, I need to dash. Alright, careful now. Alright, ride the wind. Boom. The fact that we're at cloud level really makes us... Just, you really take it in. Alright, there's a strawberry there, but I don't... I vaguely remember how to get it. Ah, oh, again with the dash! Alright, alright, alright. This is it. This is the moment to shine. Boom. Up, right. Here we go, here we go! Grab, 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 jump! Made it, made it! Here we go, that's the end of the chapter, baby! Well, that's no good. <laughs> oh, I almost said the same thing. Picture a feather floating in front of you. See it? Okay. Your breathing keeps that feather floating. Just breathe slowly and steadily, in and out. Now this is an actual segment where you actually get to play. And to breathe in, you hold down the button. And you're gonna see though, there's this still that you gotta try to match the feather in. So the idea in this section is to breathe in, breathe out. And more essentially, keep it inside the box. It's not as easy as it seems the first try around, but it's a little bit to master. More or less, I try to let go of the uh, button and it's like I tap it as it goes up. And a little bit going down because trying to keep it like right in the middle of the box is not as easy. But keep it nice in the middle and take Theo's advice. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just like a yoga class. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> and that's the end of the chapter. When all is said and done, we all have a good laugh. Now, in actuality, I think that this method with like the feather breathing technique does help some people. I can't speak for, for myself though, since I never actually experienced a panic attack. But uh, I can imagine it's probably helped some people through it. And who knows, maybe after playing the game, it's probably helped some people as well. But anyways, that's the end of chapter 4. 23 out of 29 strawberries, and 28 lives lost. We didn't get the B-side cassette tape, so I will be saving that when we start the B-sides. But uh, that in mind, that's going to do it for this episode of Celeste. So, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Now, part of me wonders... Did they have gondolas in the 1800s, or was it the 1900s? Because part of me wonders how they were able to make this on Celeste Mountain. And more or less what they even made them go to Celeste Mountain to make this gondola. Ugh. I can only wonder. But get ready. Things become a lot more intense this next chapter.